What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Tyler S. Clark, and welcome to another Dream Firm Leader interview. And what I'd like to do is not waste a single moment because I need to introduce to you the baddest accounting professional who is simultaneously one of the best accounting professionals, a Freemason that embraces the freedom of the open road on his beloved motorcycle, <laughs> the patron saint of Saints football fandom. It is an honor to introduce to you the Dream Firm Leader of Jordan accounting the man of the hour the one the only the majestic chris jordan chris it's a pleasure and an honor my friend hey. welcome how are you doing today hey man i'm good i haven't had a day i haven't had a, 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 a introduction like that in years man you got me over here giddy like a high school girl <laughs> Well, look, I, I tell everyone, you ever want to bring your show on the road, you need a, a hype man to bring you out on stage, <laughs> give me a call, brother. I will be there. I will make sure I, I get got the crowd fired up. I got up. you. I got you. That's tight. That's cool, man. A pleasure, a pleasure. So look, I want to uh, I want to dive in because you get fantastic answers to the questions that come up in the group coaching and you're always so willing to share your expertise. So I want to make sure we can get to our questions for people watching. Drop questions down below for Chris. He's got a, a plethora of experience for you guys to tap into. We're going to dive into Q&A at the end. But Chris, just give the give the people who are unfamiliar with you a little bit of that background. How did you get started in accounting? Where did you start okay. this journey? Well, um, I, I retired or decided to exit, I should say, the Marine Corps in 1997. Um, and I moved directly. I didn't even go home for vacation over the Christmas holidays and moved directly here to Atlanta. And uh, in uh, January, February, I can't, February, um, back in 98, I went to get my taxes done. Now, I knew how to do taxes, but I wanted to experience this thing that was new and new and the thing to do was rapid refund. So I went to uh, uh, one of the large box chains, if you will. I'm not going to call their name, but I went to a large box chain. And 20 minutes in, my taxes were prepared. They told me how much I was getting back. The preparer told me, hey, come back and pick up your check tomorrow. It'll be ready for you. And uh, everything will be fine. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, that's it. So I went on home and was reading through my paperwork and found that my fees for my tax prep were astronomical. So I'm like, I got to go back. Something's obviously wrong. So I went back to the preparer and she said, no, that's, that's what it is, what they are. And in that moment of, um, uh, festivity, if you will, in that moment of festivity, Jordan accounting was born. I was like, these people are, are they're, they're robbing folks. So I have to do something. So that doesn't happen anymore. And Jordan accounting back then it was Jordan accounting agency was born. I didn't have very much accounting experience, but then I was like, okay, I know how to prepare taxes, but I know nothing about accounting. So I got to get my butt in school, in college, in order to learn how to do this accounting thing as well. I always had this thing about counting. I didn't understand it when I was young, but I got in a lot of trouble for counting stuff that most people can care less about counting, like a bag of rice. Fast forward. I went to my first accounting class and I failed. I bombed my first, you know, first <laughs> couple of classes in college, man. I bombed hard, failed three times, but I was determined to get it right. So I locked myself in the basement one weekend and I said, I'm not leaving outside to go to the bathroom, grab something to eat. I'm not going to leave it until I get it down. And I finally got it down. Now here it is. Who 20 was it? 20, 24 years later, man. Wow. 24 years later, I'm still doing it and I don't want to do anything else. I'm still here. You know, I, I have found my destiny to keep it short. I have found what I'm supposed to do in life. I love it. That's absolutely fantastic. And, and on behalf of everyone, thank you for your service in the Marine Corps, Chris. Uh, I know everyone sure. would be saying that directly to you. So uh, again, thank you for that. And I, I love this part of your origin story here, which is we went to the big box Yep. We had an experience in the big pox that was less than enjoyable, confusing to say the least. Very and much. as a, as an extension of that, you then said, I'm going to go and pursue something. And even though it wasn't easy, right? Not a natural, so to speak at accounting had to not work your way through it. And how much more valuable is that, that you, you had to grind your way through it to be able to get to the other end. And now you're on the other end and you've got a blossoming business. Uh, what, almost like 20 years later here, right? Yeah. 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 It's been a long time. I'm telling you. 
<laughs> it's a long time, but it has been it has been very re rewarding, especially these last few years. It's been very rewarding, tough at times, but rewarding. Hey, nothing worth doing is going to be easy. As they say, if it was so easy, everyone would be doing it. And Absolutely. everyone is certainly not Chris Jordan. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your work experience, the type of clients you work with and, and the services you provide inside of your firm right now. OK, up until last year, up until last year, shoot, if a client was paying, I was taking them. I was I was, hey, hey, it's about the money. I was taking them. But that uh, that experience over the years have given me a broad experience of different industries. Some industries are better than others. Some industries pay more than others. However, that niche market that that we have stumbled upon since dealing with dream firms has been the most rewarding. So now um, our firm currently, uh, we basically uh, our accounting service, we offer our accounting service to membership organizations. Now, we all know there's all types of membership organizations, and usually there is a an, a, an executive type board, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, along those lines. And usually the treasurer and the secretary has to work together. But here you go. There are regular, ordinary people who might not necessarily know the dealings uh, or the back dealings when it comes to their finances. As far as all they know for the most part is receive the money in from the members and pay it out accordingly. If they're a bona fide, full-fledged 501c3, they know nothing, nothing about having their books in order or having their accounting records together to send over to a CPA or another accountant in order to get their 990s filed in a timely manner. That's where I come in. My partner and I, we not only handle the bookkeeping, the back part of what they do, but we also train those secretaries and treasurers so that they can keep their, uh, their books in pristine order. And they, and we also, of course, offer our services to their client or to their members in reference to financial consulting, financial training, or tax preparation services. I love it. And, and there's so many layers to this particular category or niche that, that Chris is exploring. And the way he's approaching it is very, very smart. He's looking at it and saying a lot of these organizations, they can be cost conscious, but they still need access to the expertise. They need the training to keep those books pristine. And maybe the opportunity isn't really necessarily directly that organization, but access to their members and what their members are doing and the trust that we are going to have piled onto us because we're working with their treasurers, because Absolutely. we're working with their secretaries, because we're keeping them up tip top shape and they're able to do more inside of that organization um, or that membership community because of the expertise that Chris is providing. So I just want to emphasize that such a smart business model, such a great choice in terms of a niche. And uh, let's... um. Let's talk a little bit about your life before working with Dream Firms because this is a this was I a very powerful was story the first time you told it to me, Chris, and I can't do it justice. So I'm not even going to try. Just paint that picture for us if you wouldn't mind. All right, we'll do. Um, back in November of 2019, I was in a motorcycle accident. Very, very, you know, I what I'm here, so I'm not complaining. I'm here. However, it made me think um, I was no broken bones, nothing serious, but given my age, I did not heal as quickly as I thought I was, uh, as I would. So with that being said, it gave me time away from my office, away from the firm to really analyze where I was in business, where I was in life. And it, it clicked for me. I'm like, hold up. I'm the end all be all in my business. If something was to happen to me, my business will die tomorrow, period. I have two grown sons, but they do not have any desire whatsoever to follow in my footsteps within the business, none. And I had to reevaluate that. In doing so, I was like, I have well over 300 clients, tax clients. At the time I had 18 bookkeeping clients. And I was like, not only am I gonna do my business a disservice, but I'm going to let every single one of those clients down. And it clicked for me. I'm like, I have to change the way I do business. I have to get somebody in here. I have to document my processes and procedures. I have to get someone in here that I can trust first and foremost, and someone that I can count on to, to, to 
continue on the legacy. Now, at first I was like, well, who am I gonna, who am I gonna get to do this? Even though I had a partner at the time, she was living in New Orleans, Louisiana, where I'm from. And at the time she had no desire whatsoever to move here to, uh, to Atlanta because this is where the bulk of the business was. So I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? So at first in dealing with, in, in uh, working with dream firms, the first thing was we can do this mobile. We can do this remotely. It can work, it can work, it can work. But then when we really thought about it, there was no possible way that it can work. There was no possible way. And that's because over all the years that I've been in business, I've been a face-to-face -face person with my clients. This is the face that they see. This is who they have come comfortable with and who they trust. So I was like, okay, I have to, somebody's going to have to be here so that I can formally introduce and then slowly wean off my responsibilities to my partner. So with that being said, uh, Shalanda, my partner, she was convinced to move here to Atlanta. And with that being said, we, you know, I, in using dream firms, she has been wholeheartedly 100%, I'll use Tyler's word, she has leaned into it, but it, that, it, it, we're, it wasn't that easy. And the, the hard part was me. I've been chained to the computer, as I call it, for 20 years, servicing clients, servicing clients, servicing clients. And with that being said, that has been my biggest downfall because I didn't need to, um, I really didn't need to document processes and procedures because I knew how to do them myself. I didn't need to write things down. At least I didn't think so because I knew how to do it. I knew what it was. It's just like I tell clients now, after, out of all of our clients, everything about them is stuck right here in my head. Every single, every story, it's all stuck right here. That service, that service is no one. It's a and it's the biggest disservice to my business. So with that being said, now Shalanda's here full time in the office. She's moved here. She's here full time in the office, and we are going through the painstaking process of changing me, at the same time enhancing the business so that I am not the end all be all, and I don't want to be the end all be all anymore. That has given me opportunity to work on the business versus working in the business. So I'm not as chained to the computer as I am, but I still have the opportunity to get things done, but I got to take direction from Shalanda, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so what a, what, a, what a fantastic story and thank you for sharing it. So much to pull from that. And really it, it was summarized extremely well at the end, which is I had to change, but that desire to change was only prompted when, when something tragic happened and we realized what, what happens if this is worse? Thank God it wasn't, of course, but what if it was? What would have happened to, my, to the relationships I have with my clients and the trust they put in me? What would have happened to the legacy that I've been building for my family? What, what would have happened to the business, my livelihood, my income? And those are tough things to get brought up against. And then Chris made powerful decisions to change the way his business operated. Tried something, right? Tried having his partner, Shalanda, in a separate location. Go take it mobile. Didn't work the way he needed it to. And Not they made all. a powerful decision to make it better, right? They, they made a decision. It's okay. Not every decision is going to work out. Analyze it. Fix it. Build on it. And that's what he's been able to do. And that's, uh, that's been able to lead to some, some really, really amazing things. I want to uh, just change gears just a tiny bit here, Chris, mm -hmm. because I, I remember when we first started, I was curious to say, Chris, you know, you seem like a pretty driven guy. Um, and I asked you, I said, have you been a part of any other programs to, to really help you break through to the next level? And you shared an interesting story with me. I think about a shark, uh, from Shark Tank. If I, if I, again, memory might not be there, but I think that's what, so give me a little bit of context or give everyone some context to some of the programs you tried previously and, and maybe a little bit of the difference here. Cool. No problem. Well, um, everybody knows Damon John. He's a shark on Shark Tank and he started a school. And uh, that school was to basically take you from being the, um, from being the, the doer of everything, of course, into this world of sales and marketing to where, you know, we thought that you just stick with Damon John and go through all of this. And on, on the other end, you will be, you will have a better business. So 
I, I, I paid the first uh, the first conference was free and it was just a day, and, you know, a couple of hours. And I went out there and it was great. And they, you know, they kind of started pulling at my heartstrings because they somehow they can tell who's driven in their business. So they said, OK, if you pay, I think I think it was like thirty five hundred dollars and you can have a weekend's worth of training. So I was like, OK, cool. So I went to the I paid for the training and then the time came and, and I'm a very observant person. So I get to the this hotel room on on Friday evening and it's this huge ballroom. I mean, huge filled with tables and the tables have 10 people around each table. And when I counted the tables, I counted well over 25. And I was like, wow. Thirty five thousand dollars per table times 25. I'm like, they making a killing. And then we thought Damon John was going to be there, but he never showed up. So I was like, okay, fr Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I'm like, okay, cool. Then, of course, they made an offer on Sunday to go to the next level of training. I'm like, okay, we got great information. I'm going to try the next level too. But the next level was more expensive, of course. It was somewhere in the areas of 20 plus thousand dollars. So I'm like, I'm gonna make the first payment because it was a finance issue. I'm gonna make the first payment. And I think the first payment was like 12 grand. So I'm like, I'm only 15,000 in, it's not so bad. And they always tell you, you have to reinvest into yourself. And I'm like, okay, I know, I know how to do what I do, but I don't know nothing about sales, nothing about marketing, nothing about actually working my business or working on my business versus working in my business. So from there, I went to the, the training class in Charlotte and it was basically the same model, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Went out there Thursday so that I can get there early. Friday, class Friday evening, all day Saturday, half the day on Sunday. Then there was another offer. This time it was in Vegas, the class was in Vegas and much more expensive. I'm talking 30 grand. Now remember, I hadn't even finished paying for the first training. I hadn't even made the second payment and I went to, and they was talking the next level for crazy amounts of money. And I was like, well, wait, 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 wait. I haven't received anything back except some great training. I haven't monetized. There's no return on my investment yet. Should I make this next payment? And I thought about it and thought about it. And I was like, I don't think I can do it. So I, I contacted my counselor and he was like, well, you know, you know, he gave me every reason in the world to make the next payment. Then I was like, no, I'm not going to make the next payment. But when I went to the first training, I sat down with a guy, a guy was sitting at my table and his product was um, like wheel shine, like armor roll or something equivalent <laughs> to that. So I called him and he made the sacrifice. I mean, go fund me borrowing money to go to this training in Vegas. And I asked him, I said, hey man, you know, I, I, I'm sorry I couldn't go to Vegas. I just couldn't afford it. How did it go? He said, man, it was the biggest waste of money I have ever made. And I felt, I felt bad for him because he had become my friend. But at the same time, I was like, well, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake. I'm glad I got out early. So with that being said, since then, and this was some years, some years ago, since then, I've been basically looking for a program to not just say, spend your money, spend your money, spend your money with hopes of a great result down the road somewhere, somehow. I've been looking for a program or I have looked for a program where I can put what I learned into action now to make changes. So I gave, I, I, I found Tyler on CPA Academy and I was like, okay, I like this style in presenting his information, I was like, okay, I'll go to the next level. So we had a conversation and it clicked. And I was like, yeah, I'm willing to do this because I can take the little bit that I learned in the one hour session on CPA Academy. I talked with Shalana and I was like, we can make this happen. If I can take from one hour and expound on it, what the possibilities are for a lot less money to work with him for, I think it was like three months or something, the first three months or something like that, whatever the dream firms and, and practice Eight igniter. Weeks. And Two then months. it took off. And I was like, well, it's working. Let's <laughs> keep it moving.
<laughs> Let's keep it moving. And here we so, are. Here we are. I, I want to pull a couple of really important parts from this. And, and Khalid, I know a couple of people are like, hey, let's talk about sales. I know there were some big things we talked about. Chris was able to pick up some nice clients recently. We're going to get into that. Trust me, guys. But uh, I want to I want to make sure that this is clear because a lot of uh, programs, it's always what's next. And then what you get to what next is then going to then make the thing happen. And that's a very award because you get the free thing. The free thing's great. You get to the next thing, the paid thing, paid thing's pretty good. But then there's the next thing. And they're trying to sell you on what's next before you've maximized what you currently Absolutely. already have invested in. And that to me is a really big problem with, with this space and industry in general is maximize what you got. Prove it right now by implementing. And more importantly, I want to I want to bring up one thing that I thought was interesting about what Chris just said. And Chris, Chris said, you know, marketing and sales, like I don't, I don't really, you know, like he said something to the effect, like, I don't really know that, or you know, I, I'm not sure about how to it's not true. Chris is a natural salesman, he's a natural marketer, but to hit, use his words, he was chained to his computer because he's stuck in operations and fulfillment. It was all sitting on his shoulder. So I have a lot of people who come to me and go, Tyler, I need more clients, right? I need more clients. And I go, awesome. We can totally help you with that. Not a problem, right? I'm like, I'd love to do that. And then I dive into a little bit more of how their business is operating. I go, if we put more clients into your business right now, that is a, that is a recipe for disaster. We have to fix things now in a certain way and then go and get the clients. And, and Chris embraced that. He knew it. He knew it and he did things. He implemented things that changed it. He hired, he, he put Shalanda in a position of power to be able to do more. He started to recognize things inside of himself that he did not agree with because of where he knew he needed to get. So again, so much powerful information there, Chris. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. No problem. Um, I think a lot of people are sometimes hesitant because they don't understand what the process is like to get started with mm -hmm. Dream Firm. So what was it like getting started with us? You mentioned CPA Academy. Obviously, anyone wants a CPE, go check out what we've got on there. Um, but let's let's go beyond that, like actually starting in the Create Your Dream Firm program. What was that like? Scary. <laughs> Not in a bad way, because I knew I knew when I looked at when when I first looked at Practice Ignited, I was like, this is going to either one, kill me because I'm going to have to change or it's going to benefit me if I allow it to change. And I'll tell anybody, and, and Shalanda can attest to this, at first it was very, very tough because I was so stringent on the way that I had been doing business because I thought it worked. But then, I mean, like, for example, like bad clients, I refused to, to fire bad clients because it was the money. It was the money. But then I realized if I only got rid of the bad weight or the bad clients, it will make room for better clients and newer clients. So once once that started, I, I started seeing that coming to fruition. Hell, I was sold. I was like, I got to keep going through with this because it is working not only on the business, but me. <laughs> it was working on me. So... <sighs> Hey, I'm the closest thing to me that I know. And it was working. Hey, and fear is real. It's tangible, but we can't let it control us. And Absolutely. Chris knew that that change was going to be difficult and removing clients that, hey, they're, 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 they're income producing, right? Like mm -hmm. we look at them, we say, and but we sit down, we analyze it. We say, what's the trade-off here that we're maybe not fully cognizant that we're making because we're so used to it right now. And then you get a Absolutely. fresh set of eyes, you get a way to think about and look at things differently. And you go, this is why I'm spinning my wheels. I have to do mm -hmm. things differently. So that fear is natural. It's normal. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? So let's, um, let's come to the here and now enough about the past. Let's talk about how it's changed your life, Chris. Um, uh -huh. Just paint a picture of the way things feel today, as opposed to you know, a little less than, I would say what, we started working maybe about eight, nine months ago. So like what that. does it yeah. feel like today as opposed to when we first started? Well, I will say, uh, given that we're embarking on tax season, it's still a little difficult because we have so many things going on at one time. However, it is nowhere, nowhere near as stressful as it was, let's say this time last year before COVID. It's nowhere near as stressful as it was. That's because we have processes and procedures in place to where the, the bulk of the weight is not on just me. It's leveled out a little bit. We have a team now of, 
I think it's eight. I don't even know because I don't do the hiring anymore. Shalanda, does. I think we have eight people on our team now. And um, with everything that we're doing, she's looking to hire two more, you know, more full-time folks in the office. So I don't even know, hey, I don't even know what's going on with it. I'm like, just just tell me. She said that, you know, with the, with the, with the power that I've given her, it's more, it's easier for her to ask for forgiveness, which she really doesn't have to, than to ask for permission. Because asking for permission puts me back into the old frame of mind that I used to have. So she knows that she has all the, she's empowered to make those decisions and just tell me what she did so that I'm not blindsided with anything. And this is such an important distinction to make here is that trusting in team members and being able to let go of needing to be in all things at all times, Shalon deserves that trust, right? We know that for a fact. And Chris has given it to her and he's not going back to his old ways as a direct result team is expanding. And, and sometimes people hear what he just said, right? Like, I don't even know. I have 18 members, I think. Like, I'm not, and people are like, you don't know what's going on in your own business. And it's like, no, he's focused on his priorities in his business. And he's trusting his team members to handle their priorities that he's delegated to them. There's a huge difference between those two things. Absolutely. And again, that's a compliment to Chris. So let's Let's think about what that it's allowed you to do in terms of how your responsibilities have shifted because you shared something with us about a week or two ago about biggest client you picked up to date. And yeah. let's talk just a little bit about how you've been able to win back that time and now what you're doing with that time because you're trusting your team and what it's led to in terms of results with marketing and okay. sales. Um, as, as Tyler said, we picked up a very, very large client that... Um, that not only allows us to deal with their accounting and, and, you know, accounting and taxes, but it gives us access to another 380, no, 360 auxiliary, auxiliary units as well. And all of their members. And that's just, just in the state of Georgia. So, you know, Shalanda and I, we were talking in our morning meeting this, just this morning. I was like, you know, we have a, you know, we kind of have a good problem that can turn bad, but a good problem that we got to do everything it is that we can in our power to keep it good. So just be ready that, you know, if you need to hire some people, you need to have the pool already full. So she's in there doing her thing because we're doing some other stuff, you know, outside of our, our normal clientele that, I mean, it has, it has blossomed. And when I say blossom, it's, it's, it's like the one client that you always dream of that can change your life. We're running right now on probably 50,000. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to take on 50,000. No, I don't. I, I don't want to take on 50,000 tax clients today. I, I No, no. We have to cut it. We have to cut it off and say, this is our maximum capacity that we will allow ourselves to take on. And then from there, who knows? They have to wait, find somebody else and maybe come along when we are ready for that. When we are ready for that type of clientele, we just, there's no way we can do that right now. I refuse to put myself in that position. I refuse to put my team in that position. You know, mm -mm, nope. Now, whereas back in the day, I probably wouldn't have said no to any of that and be like, shoot, I'll fake it till I make it and try to figure it out while I'm in it. But mm, not now, <laughs> not now. If you accidentally spear a whale in a, in a fishing boat, you're in serious, serious trouble. And it's, it's a smart strategic decision from Chris right now to be able to say no and recognize his capacity, but also know that the way he's treating, building his team, the way he's treating documenting his process is the way that he understands that getting this right allows him to look at that and say, now we're ready. Yep. And that's not an opportunity. not going anywhere. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere because he has the relationship already. It's just, he's pumping the brakes on the floodgates because yeah. he doesn't want to get flooded and, and face the consequences and get burned. And that to me is a huge, huge strategic decision. Hey Tyler, uh, this is something that I didn't say. I, I, and I should have. I've given myself five years, one down already. So I got four left because I, I told myself that I want to retire at 55. And I had to make that shift to, in order to get that done. It's not going to happen overnight. 
I got it. But I got my, I, I have a five year, well, a four year window in order to get it right. That way, when I do make 55, I'm ready. I'm ready to say, you know what? I, I, it's been a great ride, but it's time to step aside. Hey, you need a goal in order to be able to, to something to shoot for in order, in order to go for it. You've got that defined and the progress you've made in the last nine months makes me wonder if you're not going to do it in, in two years since as opposed to five, <laughs> if you want to. I, I mean, love what I do. So I, even if I do get there, I'm still probably going to hang around. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I know that lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. Um, give a, give a little bit of an insider's perspective, Chris, what do you enjoy most about working with dream firms? With dream firms, the t it's the team. You know, every Wednesday we look forward to the call to the point to where I'm like, okay, my Wednesday is completely clean. Whereas I can come in, have my head right, get ready for my uh, for the 12 o'clock call because not only do I have the opportunity to um, pour in to our team members, but I am receptive to our team members pouring into me. You know, at first I was talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and, talking and now it's more of a listening because some, some of, the, of the team members are a little bit ahead of where I am, but we still share the same experiences because a lot of them are new. So the, the growing pains that they're going through, I've already done that years ago and the success that they can express helps me. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, we, you know, we share to the point to where we all can use a little bit from each other in order to grow successfully. And it brings up an old saying that I love, Chris, which is the older we get, the more the problems stay the same. It, it, <laughs> and the bigger you get, it's still hiring. It's still training. It's yep. still, there's a certain amount you have to spend to be able to get in front of somebody, whether it's dollars or time. And it comes back to building systems and the systems mm -hmm. that other team members, again, the way Chris is referencing team members is people inside of the program. He literally looks at like the people in the dream firms program is like a part of his team. And I agree, like I yep. view it the same way and it's leveraging other accounting professionals expertise, not just Marine and myself and the dream firms staff, but the team of accounting professionals that are solving yep. or have solved the problems that you are currently experiencing going through. And again, I always, I find it fascinating that that is the answer that most people will say. They're like, we love you, Tyler, but it's really the community of all the like-minded entrepreneurs you put together. Yeah. I'm like, it's fine. You're not like, you can't, it can't insult me. That's a compliment because I'm very selective in letting people into that community because it, it's, it's so valuable when we have the right people like Chris and, and obviously the other dream firm leaders. So um, let's let's cut to the chase here, Chris. If you don't yep. mind, again, no pressure one way or the other. How much have you added to your firm, and in what time frame? Ooh, let's see. Now this is going to blow your mind, given the program that I talked about last week. You know that thought process thing. Um, I will say it like this: I think we have brought on in the last two weeks. We're uh, approaching. 200,000 in revenue with, um, you know, I, I don't want to count those chickens before they get home or before they hatch, but um, we, we got 200,000 in uh, applications. With that, we have opportunity for another probably 150 in long-term clientele. And of course, some of that clientele feeds over to the tax prep side as well. Yeah, it, it, it when I tell you about that that good problem to have, and I have another, watch this, I have another, the, the one call that I had last week has blossomed into three more calls. I did one Monday, one, I did one last night, and I got another one tonight by popular demand. So it the sky's the limit on that. The, the sky's the limit on that, but the deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> it's tomorrow because we, we can't take on much more than that. And this is such an, uh, a, a, the flip. So first of all, that's incredible. I, I just have to say it out loud. Like that's unreal. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you. And, and I want to make sure this is clear to everyone. That's hundred percent on Chris. Like as much, as much as I love him being a part of dream firms and what we do, that's a hundred percent his success. Cause he takes action every single day that leads to results like that, that these things don't just materialize because you decided to join the program. He puts in the work to get there. And that's 100% on him. So thank you for sharing that, Chris. Thank that's you. Un it's unbelievable. Like I said, I'm like a little afraid of what comes next for you because uh, <laughs> this, 
the sky really is the limit here. So <clears throat> what would you say to someone considering our services right now? Say that one more time. What would you say to someone considering our services right now, Chris? It will probably be the best investment that you will make in the next five to 10 years. I will, I will say that. And I, and I say that because, like I said, I've been out there many, many, many years and have tried so many different programs, just looking for the one that not only talks the talk, but walk the walk. And, and for me, once I said, okay, you know, I'm going to try this. And like I said, just from the hour, the one hour course, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to try that. And I can see the difference. Then I was like, okay, I want more. And then I got on to the, uh, the, the practice igniter and dream firms and it worked. Like I said, not necessarily all 100% on the business, but me. And, you know, as I say all the time, the first person that you have to deal with a first client or first, you know, your best friend, you have to look in the mirror and deal with yourself. And that allowed me, that taught me to deal with me. You know, what I've, what I've been learning since I've been, you know, in dream firms, I've learned to look at me and say, hey, you know, hey, dude, well, I call myself Big J when I'm talking to myself, but hey, man, um, you need to fix that about you because, in order for in order for it to work behind you, it has to start working with you. And once it started working with me, then I was like, okay, cool. Let me turn Shalanda on to this. And it's almost like the pieces of the puzzle finally fit together. And when you have you know a, a, a nice puzzle with all the pieces in the right place, no shortcuts. I gotta I gotta say that without taking any shortcuts, you, the picture that you see is a very beautiful picture. And with that, you can only, or we can only expound on the picture that we have now. So the sky is the limit. I gotta be honest with you, the sky is the limit. Use dream firms, but you have to invest yourself into allowing it to work on you. Once you, once you, once you commit to that investment, I can guarantee you, you will see the results. Now it doesn't happen overnight, but you will see the results. No such thing as overnight success. And I just got to ask, can I call you Big J? Or is that- yeah, No. You only... <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. I can't call you. All right. All right, Chris. There you uh, go. Okay. So let's, um, let's, uh, and uh, if you want to take me on the road to be your hype man, what you just said, you got to come <laughs> on the road, be my hype man too. Cause that was from the heart, man. And, and it really, uh, really means a lot to me that you'd be willing to say this. So one step further now is we've talked about people who would be considering this coming into the program, but why do you specifically consider this one of the best investments you've ever made, Chris? Because of not the, not, because, not necessarily because of the monetary results. I got to be honest with you. It's not about the monetary results. You know, if, if you put work into anything, you will see results. They may not necessarily be what you want them to be, but there'll be results nonetheless. For me, um, it helped me become a better person. It helped me become, Dream Firms helped me become a better man. It helped me become a better business owner. And in turn, I'm not the uh, grumpy old, damn, it's tax season. You know, I, I can smile more now. <laughs> I can smile more now. And it's tax season. I can smile more because I, I believe in the process that we've put in place, given or following the dream firm's model. You know, we've we've put processes in place to where I can say, hey, you know, what do you think? Instead of saying this is the way it's going to be, you know, I'm racking my brain saying, damn, I, I did that, but it didn't work. Whereas whereas Shalon and I, we sit down and we collectively say, OK, this is when, once we put this process in place, this is what our expectations will be. And if it doesn't work, we have the opportunity to tweak it. And, and that goes all the way back to the, uh, the traffic light, the traffic light spreadsheet. Whereas I never knew, I never thought about sectioning off the business into five main categories. I never thought about it because remember y'all, I was the end all be all. So even though I may have done it, I didn't section it all. So it basically all ran together and I had just, just one light. But now, you know, we are collectively and everything fits into its place. 
So we address everything according to its section. When we're talking about delivery, we on the page of delivery. When we're talking about operations, we're on the page of operations, finances, sales and marketing and, and, and so on. So when, for me, it has made me more focused because, you know, for example, like Friday is our focus day. So in the other, in the other times I have my own things that I focus on, but we collectively focus together on Friday. And with that being said, I've become more relaxed. You know, I'm not as grumpy and I am more accepting or more, yeah, more accepting to change and more accepting to things being better. I can see beyond, you know, my own blinders to say the least. So many amazing things in that response. And the, the main one that I'll take away from this is everybody listening to this and, and Chris, I know everybody works hard. It's not about working hard. Mm -hmm. You do that naturally as an entrepreneur. That is, that is innate. You are already forging the path. It's how do you know what to focus on and how can you have that reality check with mm -hmm. yourself, that brutal honesty. I saw someone, I think it was Khalid just comment, right? He's like, I need to have that meeting with myself. And that's such a great way of saying it and reflecting on it and being like, if, I, if I'm not happy with where I am in my business, whose fault is that? Is it my client's fault? Is nope. it the way I'm approaching my own business? And the answer is most likely it's the way you're approaching your own business. And once you start approaching it differently, guess what happens? Different results. You end up in a different place. You move faster than if you just kept doing the same things that you always previously had done them as. So uh, Absolutely. fantastic answer, Chris. Thank you for sharing. Hey, no well, I was going to ask this question, but I didn't even know about what you just said when I was like, how much did you add? And how, I was going to say, yeah. how close are you to winning your first Dream Firm Award? 100K in less than 365. You just dropped the knot. <laughs> you were like, 100K in three. <laughs> You mean, did you mean, did you miss, did you add a digit by mistake? What about hundred K in 30 days, three days? Is that what you asked Tyler? Unbelievable. Congratulations yeah. on winning the award. You might, you are going to have like a, a friggin' wall full of them soon <laughs> at the rate you're going. Um, one last question before we dive into open Q and A. So if you've got questions, drop them down into the Facebook chat on zoom. Chris is going to have a, about 10 minutes here. Who would you recommend the create your dream firm program to, especially knowing that the value you put on the, as you said, at the team that mm -hmm. surrounds you, the other participants in the program, who do you want to see standing side by side with you as a part of this program, Chris? I would say dream firms is for the end all be all person entrepreneur, regardless if, if it's accounting or whatever, if you're it in your business, dream firms is for you. And I say that because if you are creating, if your, your ultimate goal is to create a legacy, you cannot create that legacy by yourself. It's impossible. You may, when you're doing it by yourself, you're not creating a legacy. In all actuality, you've created a job. And that's something that I always say that I don't want anymore. I left corporate America many, many moons ago. I don't want a job. I want to, I'm creating a legacy for my family, it may not necessarily be my sons, but you know, I got some grandkids coming behind me and, and some nephews that loves it. But so if you're it by yourself, dream firms is for you. That's who I would say, hey, you, hey, you got to fix that. Because <laughs> if it's only you, you and only you, that's a problem. We go further together. And Absolutely. again, you, you can only do so much. We got to pull people out of the minutia, focus on higher level activities, doer to director. And Chris mm -hmm. has made that transition. And um, what a what an unbelievable process that has been. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to jump jump into Q&A. I got a great one here from from Jeffrey, a cool. fellow motorcycle enthusiast. What's your ride? <laughs> a gold wing. What, is, there, <laughs> is there any other motorcycle besides a gold wing? <laughs> As someone who is terrified to ride a bicycle, I am not qualified to have this conversation. You and Jeffrey can take it off, off chat here. Cool. Um, <laughs> Anthony says, how did you become a Freemason? Do you guys really control the world? Hash uh, joking in parentheses. No, the, 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 the easiest way to become one is to ask one and you will get your answer. There you go. So if you want to join that, that elusive club, uh, you found out one right now. Gia says, go Saints. Tough exit this year in the playoffs. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You, 
her, she's asking for some football advice. Do you think they stick with Jameis or look to the draft for a new QB with threes out? We got to talk about accounting. <laughs> what is this question? <laughs> Now, you don't trust I, don't, I think we're going to get. Uh, I think we're going to get a seasoned quarterback. I honestly believe we're going to we're going to make a run for uh, uh, Deshaun Watson out of Houston. Well, if you want Carson Wentz, we'll give him to you for free. Ah, uh, you can go and keep him. Trust me. <laughs> Mm-mm. All right. Uh, Lavelle says yes. It's my destiny too. I love it. Lavelle also says, "What if something happens to yourself with all that knowledge?" And and I'm going to just jump on that real quick. Chris is taking action right now to prevent that, right? He knows mm-hmm. that his brain trust is not safe up here, largely because of that accident. He had he came up against the reality of that and said, this is, this is not the way things should be done. And if any of you are in that solopreneur mode or just know that too much is sitting on your shoulders and is trapped up here, well, you have to prepare for that eventuality, that bend around the, the corner that you can't see in your business right now. Yep. You prepare for that today by trusting your team members and starting to understand that it's okay to let go. It's okay to make sure that it's let go in the right way mm-hmm. based on how you set the expectations. I know Chris and Shalon do a fantastic job of that. Uh, Lavelle also says, very enlightening. Uh, Khalid said, I would love to listen how to get customers for accounting business. Khalid, that's literally what we do like all day in the Product Accounts yep. Facebook group. You want the one-on-one stuff and create your dream firms, what Chris went through where he's getting these crazy, crazy results. Like apply, we'll drop the link in the comment section, but that's literally what we do. Hyper-efficient systems to attract and win the business of your dream clients. Lavella again, love it. Yes, knowledge is power, but implementation is key to success. I had to get over myself to get started. Yep, yep. that's going to be truer. Avery says, wow. Wow, you became a content machine. Someone must must be knowing what's going on with you on the on the backside here, Chris. Uh, talk a bit, little bit about that. He says he's terrified to go live. Um, so, what, what you just recently started doing this, where you're going live, you're sharing things. Um, what propelled you to do that? What are you sharing, and what could you share with someone who has never done that before to get them over the hump? Okay, well, I taught college for 15 years as an adjunct professor for a long time, so I love to teach. I love to talk. However, with the going live thing, I just started going live and, you know, ranting, to be honest with you, ranting about nothing. Then um, one of my friends, you know, hit me on the back line and she says, you know, you're too intelligent to be ranting about nothing. I know you have something to offer. So try coming with something that we can use. So I started with with little stuff like, you know, the definition of commitment, little bitty things and just pouring what's inside of me just up just putting it out there just talking and from there it has blossomed like now i'm on facebook live an hour every single day of the week and i not only talk about accounting and finances where which is my expertise but i talk about normal everyday stuff that people want to know and want to learn but they just don't know how to go and find it they know what it is but they are afraid of you know, Googling something because that's like drinking from a fire hydrant. Whereas here I am talking about things in my experiences where people say, you know what, that makes so much sense. You know, I mean, it makes so much sense just to hear it in the manner coming from a regular everyday old dude, you know, just me. I mean, but it's also the veteran. It's the leader of his dream firm. It's the guy with the knowledge in finance, something that people are lacking. And I say that because sometimes we look at it and we say, why would someone listen listen to me? And, and Chris even just invited, and I'm just some old, old guy sharing some things. And it's like, no, you're so much more than how, than how that was just portrayed. And other people see it. Sometimes we have a hard time in seeing it in ourselves, but mm-hmm. that is a hundred percent the truth. And there's a reason people are listening to it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm like, what is the definition of commitment? Like what a hook. I'm going to go watch that video in just a little bit here. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that man. was my Facebook live yesterday. That was commitment was yesterday. <laughs> and one other thing to pull from that for Avery is just get started, right? Like Chris got started and it was, it was, to his own, to use his own words, right? It wasn't that good. People were like, this is too intense. You're just rambling or you're, you know, as Kanye mm-hmm. says, uh, you're ranting and ranting is a symphony of ideas. And it's like, but pick one idea, yeah. pick commitment, pick, pick profitability, pick something that's going to be easy to digest. And people yep. go, I trust this guy. He, mm-hmm. I like what he's saying. And as you start to build more and more trust, 
guess what? More and more calls, more and more dream clients. It's the way the world works today. And Chris is participating in a high quality way and he's getting feedback. You don't get feedback. You can't get better. You're scared to do something. That's usually a good sign. You should go and go ahead and do it. Um, yep. I, uh, Khalid, Tyler, you're right. It requires implementation. We've got to move through these quickly just because we got about five, five plus minutes left here. Um, yes, Khalid, it requires implementation. Uh, Lavella, I am it. I really need a team to relieve the stress. Lavella, start part-time. I tell you, it's a lot of people, they, they're, they're hesitant because they think they need a full 40-hour part-time. Just what are you doing that you don't need to be doing that you can train someone to do quickly to buy back your time at a discount? It's one of my favorite expressions. Your time is the most precious resource. You're not buying their time. You're buying your own time back at a discount. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack says, what was your process of firing bad clients? We didn't really have a, we talked about that a little bit, but what was that like? A lot of people hear that. They're like, I mean, what do you do? Just like, yeah, yeah. actually um, I had a very large client and the, the pay it wasn't all that good, but it was good enough to keep. Not only was um, was it a client, but it was in all actuality, it was a friend. And the fr when I found when I got with Dream Firms, I, I realized what my worth was. And I tried to well, I tried to have a conversation about increasing fees because of the services that I had been providing. And then it just went to the left. And then I was like, you know what? This relationship really is only one sided. It's all about you. It's not about us collectively. So I'm going to go ahead on and remove myself and allow you to find someone else to see if you can get half as much that I give you for the price that I pay, that I charge you and or for the price that I'm asking. And it just didn't work out for them. And then when they tried to come back, I was like, no, nah, that's OK, because we're not on the same page. We're not on the same page. So I allowed them to fire themselves. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not going it, to. It's not worth the headache or the stress anymore. And so there's some really great parts of this, right? When you're removing a client, it's normally see you later. I just want to be clear. Like a lot of people are like, oh, it's so it's like a tough breakup. It's like, no, they don't know how good they have it. Mm -hmm. And then they go out there and they try and find something comparable and they go, oh, what did I, what was the mistake? What did I do? I, how could I have looked at this horse from the wrong end for so long? And then they come back. But at that point in time, you're already on to bigger and better things because normally those relationships, they take up a lot of time. You win that time back. They, they, you're thinking about, oh man, they're not priced right. Oh man, I have to deal. Oh man, they're, they're calling my cell phone because they're my friend. And like, it's like, mm -hmm. oh man, all these things, they're eating seconds, minutes, hours, and it adds and it adds and it adds and they don't appreciate it in the first place. Why? Why continue, right? That, that to me is like the definition of insanity. They're not going to change. They come back, maybe change it, reestablish expectations. But Chris was like, I don't need this anymore. I'm right. I used that time. I won back to go and get people who do appreciate me. So Absolutely. why would I continue with this? It doesn't make sense. Um, let's see here. I've got um, Jack says, what, what are the common traits of bad clients? Jack, uh, let's just not collaborative, all about them, always argue about pricing, uh, think they can get it for cheaper from somewhere else, uh, don't respect your boundaries, call you at mid, like just literally when you're like, is this pissing you off? Sorry, I don't like to use that learn language. Is this bothering you? Is it, if it's bothering you, Jack, that's a sign it's a bad client, okay? So just again, set your own expectations because if you don't set them, it, there are no expectations, right? Everything becomes ac acceptable and you end up dealing with things you shouldn't. Uh, let's see here. Um, Marge says, Tyler seems to be big on niches, but it doesn't seem like you've got one quite yet, or maybe I missed it. Why is that? So he does have a fantastic niche, membership communities. Um, he does have some other clients and other spaces. And just to be clear, like, that's cool, guys. Like, I'm not here to be like, no, only this one thing. From, <laughs> like, he's got good clients in other spaces. You picked up a, like a jeweler the other day. And yeah. I was, he's, got, yep. he's got plenty of opportunities. And a niche only helps make him more valuable to those people. And ultimately, it just benefits everything in, in general. Uh, I've got something from Sarah. Sarah says, wow, fancy, what fantastic growth, Chris. No kidding, Sarah. Uh, congratulations. Are you struggling with processing the work? I'm terrified that I get overwhelmed with growth like that. She must have come in at the end here, Chris. But mm -hmm. well, I mean, I know we have concerns, but. Yeah, and, and you have to address them. You know, in your planning process, you have to say, okay, when you're looking at yourself, there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only so much that you can do. And if you're not, if you don't have the ability to stay awake 24 hours a day, you have to say, okay, in eight hours or in 10 hours, how much can I do in 10 hours? 
or 12 hours, whatever you feel comfortable with. And that's your limitation. If anything comes in that takes you beyond that, don't don't try to do it yourself. It's time to find somebody else to, to assist you. And then you have to get into the mode of delegating because if you're not delegating, all you're doing is the work. Like I said, if you're by yourself, you've created a job. If you want to create a legacy or a business to where you are delegating, you're going to have to, you're going to, there's no way you can do it by yourself unless you may, you know, you might have split personalities or something like that. But if you're in the other person, then that person, the first person is absent and that doesn't work either. You're still just one person. So if you have a capacity and you get a client or something that exceeds the capacity that you already at, it's time to start looking at someone else or looking for some assistance. I love it. Great response. Hope that helped you, Sarah. And I'm going to rapid fire through these last questions because we had a flurry that come in at the last second here. Uh, what are the process? What are you using to process the work? This is from Joanne. I know Tyler recommends Tax Dome, but I haven't tried it. He uses Tax Dome. He just leaned into it recently yeah. and getting fantastic results out of it. Uh, Dwight says, do you work nationally, Chris, or just locally, national? Nationally. Correct? Why, why locally, right? What does that mean? Um, Albert says, what percentage of success do you attribute to dream firms? Albert, 0%, just to be clear. 0% is what Chris attributes because I attribute 100% of his success to Chris. There is no other way. It's all him. Is there a relationship that helps make it happen? Yes, but it's still him at the end of the day. It's 100% on Chris. We take no responsibility because it's on him. Uh, David says, what do I need to get started? David, link in the, in the chat somewhere, dreamfirms.com, like slash whatever, you'll book a call, apply, you'll learn everything. Jeff says, what's the best number to reach you on, Tyler? Jeff, don't work like that, my friend. We got book calls. We got to protect our time. I'm going to teach you to do the same. I know Chris does the same. All our top clients, protect your time. You're going to have a link to book a call. So use that and uh, we'll ultimately have a chance to make sure you're a good fit. Uh, I've got a question from Elena. Do you still offer the 50K guarantee for signing up or did I miss that? Elena, of course, I put your money where my mouth is, right? Like if I'm saying you're going to make it, right? This is going to work. You think I'm not going to take you? I'm going to put your money, put it in my back pocket. I'm gonna, no, 50K guarantee still in play. Come take at, come get at it. It's, it's a ridiculous deal. Um, mm -hmm. Albert says, all right, just convince me I'm all in. Book my call now. Way to go, Albert. Way to take action. And then Jerry says, I am ready to build my dream firm. No mm -hmm. more chaotic tax seasons. I like the way Chris is smiling about tax season, <laughs> taking an hour out of it for an interview. Uh, let's go. Booked. Way to go, Jerry. That brings us to the end of today's interview. Chris, any parting shots? Hey. You can build your own dream firm. You just got to put, you just have to invest your time. I love it. I love it. Couldn't be any more true. It's been an absolute pleasure, Chris. Thank you so much. And again, link will be down below. Book your call. Taxis is an excuse. You want to be happy, less grumpy. What All the things Chris said, you can do it. It starts today and analyze yourself. Make it happen. Our pleasure, Lavella. And remember that only you can create your dream firm, but me, Chris, the entire Dream Firms team is here to help you every single step of the way. Have a fantastic, fantastic work week and book your call. See y'all.